Hello everyone, my name is Samit Badera and I'm Associate Professor of Neurological Surgery and the Director of Epilepsy Surgery at UC Irvine. Today I'm going to talk to you about a novel approach for treating subdural hematomas that I think will be very beneficial for neurosurgeons. This system that I'm talking about is the IRAflow system. And at UC Irvine, we were actually the very first center in the country to use this cutting edge treatment option for a patient with a chronic subdural. We wrote this up in a publication in World Neurosurgery and it's called Novel Use of a Dual Lumen Catheter for Irrigation and Drainage After Evacuation of a Chronic Subdural Hematoma. This was a 82 year old gentleman who had presented to us with approximately two and a half centimeter left convexity subdural hematoma with several millimeters of midline shift and subfalcine herniation. We at UCI, we generally do mini craniotomies for the evacuation of the subdural hematoma. What we noted uh, intraoperatively was that the brain had very minimal, if not any expansion. And so for that reason, we placed an iroflow catheter into the subdural cavity. I'll show you what it looked like. Um, what you see on uh, the left was the patient's initial presentation and CT scan. You can see that the subdural was very large and putting pressure across the entire left sided convexity with significant midline shift. Because we saw several membranes inside the subdural, we elected to do a mini craniotomy to evacuate that blood clot. We placed the IRAflow catheter in after the subdural was evacuated. And what you see is that there's still some uh, brain compression uh, and lack of re-expansion on day one. For this reason, we continued to irrigate. Uh, and on day two, we saw that the brain had continued to expand, at which point we removed the uh, catheter. The overall time for IRAflow drainage was approximately 48 hours. For the irrigation component, we essentially had a very conservative uh, irrigation of between 30 and 50 milliliters per hour. What we noted was that the output for the first day was approximately 80 milliliters per hour, and on the second day was approximately 50 milliliters per hour. So throughout the course of the drainage, we did see that there was a net positive output of fluid uh, coming from the system, meaning that none of the irrigation that we placed into the intracranial cavity remained within that cavity and everything came out with the addition of additional blood products. I'd like to leave you with some final thoughts about the IRAflow system, as well as some needed next steps. I think with the treatment of patients with chronic subdural, one of the biggest problems that we have is that once we've evacuated the subdural, whether we place a drain in the subdural space or the subgaleal space, or we don't place a drain, the best approach that we're able to do is a wait and see approach, meaning that we perform several CTs and watch and make sure that where the chronic subdural was, we've not turn that into an acute subdural due to lack of brain re-expansion. One of the benefits of the IRAflow system is that it continuously irrigates and mobilizes that fluid during the time in which the brain re-expands. This allows us to not only monitor and continue to evacuate those blood products, but it prevents acute blood from uh, clotting in that space and converting a chronic subdural into an acute subdural. During the time that we tested the uh, IRAflow system, uh, IRS was very uh, forthcoming in terms of making improvements. They improved the drainage bag as well as the software so that the nurses were better able to use the system and we were much better at understanding the data that was coming out of the system. In the future, I believe that the two main things that need to be addressed are the catheter rigidity to ensure that when we place the catheter into the into the space whether it be in the ventricle or in the subdural space 
that it maintains that rigidity so that it doesn't kink off or uh, stop drainage or irrigation from coming in. Also, a new tunneling technique is needed because the current system is not ideal in terms of how to place the drain uh, subgaleally and uh, in the subdural space. Thank you very much for uh, attending this talk today. Uh, again, my name is Samit Badera. Thank you.